What's going on everybody? Resale Rabbit here. So we're doing another dollar sale. Um, today is Sunday. Yes, I am working the weekend. Well, today, I didn't work yesterday. Uh, but I need to get this area cleared up because we're starting our dollar sale on Thursday, running it through next Sunday. So here's what we're working with. All of these books are going into sale. This stuff is from that store buyout in Indiana. It's gonna be a mix of eBay, the sale, and local auctions. For now, I just need to get it out of the way. Uh, this stuff, there's going to be a lot of dollar sale stuff on there. That's mostly Shopco. This is a pallet of books, and that's a pallet of phone cases that we're selling as a pal as two pallets, so we're going to have to move those out of the way. Um, this is dollar sale stuff from the Amazon pallets. We have to get all of this stuff off these shelves. Some of this, I might just throw in the dollar sale. I was going to try and move it with a local auction, but it's in the way. And honestly, this set here, I'd be happy with five bucks, five speakers. So, you know, we'll put those in the dollar sale, but some of it we're gonna get rid of. Uh, I mean, get it out of the, right, out of the way. Um, all of these car parts, we need to get out of here. So I'm gonna throw these on the pallet and get this out. This stuff, this pallet and that pallet are all Office Depot stuff that wasn't good for online sales. So that's gonna get tossed in the dollar sale. Uh, this pallet, however, I wish I could get a buck a piece for these, but they're going to be a tough sell. I'm going to get this out of the way. I will just to see if maybe I can sell some, throw some of these in the dollar sale. One of these is full of them. So uh, what else? I might see if I can get rid of that. Uh, it does have a VCR and that those do sell on eBay, but that thing is huge. It's going to be a nightmare to ship. So maybe I'll put something on it, like we'll pay you a dollar to take it or something like that. Uh, most of this stuff is going to the dollar sale. Obviously the tables aren't being sold, they're gonna be used. This is stuff that didn't sell in the last sale. Normally if it didn't sell, we don't put it in the next one. I'm gonna make an exception here because this is new product that wasn't put out until you know towards the end. Um, and then we gotta clear off these shelves as well. I believe all of these have dollar sale stuff in them. I'm not entirely certain on that though. I'll have to check. Uh, this is all Shopco stuff here. That's Office Depot. Um, the bottom shelf is full of these from the last dollar sale. Decent merchandise that I think will be worth putting back in. Uh, this one, we're gonna run it a little bit differently. So the last sale, I ran it for three days. I brought in $5,600. Now I did not start promoting it until like midnight the night before. So the first day only did like 800 bucks. Normally that's a slow but solid day. You know, normally I'm doing about a thousand bucks a day in a, in a sale. So it's a little less, but still decent. But in the last sale, we had a lot of new product from Shopco and Office Depot. And a lot of people ask about my cost. Did you really make any money when you factor your cost? Yes, I did. Um, most of this stuff is the stuff that I don't, didn't want in the first place. When you buy out a store, you have to buy everything. So I took all the good stuff, I put it on eBay, I put it on Amazon, I ran it through local auctions. This is the stuff that I really don't have a great market for. So I've already made my money back. Like the Office Depot one, for example, I've got a ton of Office Depot product there for sale in the dollar sale. I paid about 10 grand for the entire store and there was $200,000 in inventory. I've already brought in over $20,000 from this. So I've got no cost in that. We're just getting rid of the smalls that have little to no value. Most of the Office Depot branded product or the items that are only a couple bucks retail that really aren't worth putting online. So I've got a little cost in it. The used stuff, see, I started doing these dollar sales because I would end up with, I had a, a van at the time. I didn't have my truck and trailer, I had a van. I would end up with several van loads after buying out storage units with stuff that I don't wanna sell. It's not worth enough for eBay, it's not going to a local auction, it's not going on Amazon. It's usually like clothing, small toys, pot, you know, beat up pots, pans, mismatched dishes, things like that. So I decided instead of giving it all the goodwill or St. Vincent de Paul or something like that where I get no benefit, side note, the way my business is structured, I can't write those off. I can only write off my cost and my cost is zero on that stuff unless I wanted to count out the entire unit and say, well, I spent $400 on the unit, so every single item was one third of a penny each. Yeah, that's just too much hassle than it's worth. Uh, but anyways, so I get no benefit giving it to a thrift store. So I figured why not do a sale? So I threw it all on the table. It's not worth the time to price it. A lot of the stuff was worth more than a buck. In the last sale, I sold a guitar. 
it was really beat up and had no strings. Uh, but anyways, you know, a lot of people seemed very happy with it and excited about the deals. So everything's a buck, no prices, and I would bring in 2,500 to 3,500 bucks on stuff that I was gonna give away. Yeah, it's well worth doing these. So anyways, getting off topic here. Um, this is how I'm gonna do this sale differently. For starters, I am really gonna focus on refilling those tables. I don't want any point where the tables are emptying off. To have a successful dollar sale where you're making that kind of money, you need to move some serious product. Remember, $3,000, that means you're moving 3,000 products. Um, and you're not selling everything. I would say at any given time, there's about 10,000 products out in the dollar sale. And over the course of the week, I sell 3,000 of them. So just, just worth thinking about. Um, but I need to make sure those tables are constantly full. And that is going to be my mission. I've got employees. And I did mention in the last video how much I made after paying payroll. Um, but I do have employees that run the sale. So I'm going to focus my time on refilling the tables, getting as much product out as I can. That's one change. Number two, you know, we're four days before the sale right now getting ready. So that means I can promote it more in advance. That means day one is going to bring in more people. Usually day one has the most people. Um, and it didn't really work out that way last time because I didn't advertise until the last second. So that is the second thing I'm going to do is advertise sooner. In fact, I'm thinking today I'll start promoting it. And number three, I don't know if I'm going to regret it or not. We're running Sunday. So fourth day. Last time I, I did, I did two Sundays. Now I've done two sales in my life where we were open on Sunday as well. And both times I did not make much after payroll and everything. I made like 50 to a hundred bucks was not worth it. Um, but this time I think, Think, I mean, we had so many extra people. The days, every day was better than the last on the last sale. So I think Sunday might be worthwhile. Now, one thing to pay attention to, um, around here at least, the Packers. If the Packers are playing on Sunday, we're not going to get a lot of traffic. We're really close to the stadium, first off, so there's a lot of, it's tough to get to us during a Packer game. Uh, you know, small town here, there's only 100,000 people in Green Bay. So when there's a Packer game, the streets are clogged. Also, you know, people love the Packers here in Green Bay. So if there's a game on, they're not going to be shopping. They're going to be sitting at home or sitting at a bar or restaurant. And they're going to be watching the game. Well, this week, the Packers are playing on Monday night, meaning it's not going to affect us at all. So that's, that's something that I needed to pay attention to if I was going to do a Sunday sale. Um, Thursday, if they were playing Thursday, it wouldn't be that big of a deal uh, because we close up at 4. Thursday night games are at 7.30. So... Not a huge concern, although I'd prefer not to do it on Thursday if the Packers are playing, but a noon game on Sunday. By the way, we're in central time, if you're wondering why these times sound weird. A noon game on Sunday. Uh, we don't want to be having a sale concurrent to that. Even if the Packers are on the road, people are going to be busy. So that's kind of where we're at now. We're going to try and move as much product as possible. On the third day... Trying to remember my numbers. I believe I did 2,600 on the third day. And I did like 2,200-ish on the second day. So if I can maintain those numbers and do 2,500 a day for four days, that's 10 grand. I'm really hoping. That's my goal. Now, here's something that's going to make it difficult. Clothing. I had a ton of Shopco clothing on the last one. And I decided I'm not putting clothing on this one. At least not new clothing. Storage unit clothes. Yeah, definitely. But here's why. So this looks like a mess back here, but other than these chairs, this is all clothing from Target. It's all brand new stuff, boxed up from Target. Um, I bought out a liquidation store that went out of business. And I got, it was like 11,000-ish pieces of clothing and shoes. I paid 50 cents each. Um, if you want to see more info about that, I've got two videos. One where I bought it uh, about a year ago, and one not long ago, a couple months maybe, where I did an update video. The main reason I decided not to sell it, well, I didn't want to sell it right away because it's heavy in summer clothes, and this was winter time when I got it. I think it was around November or December of 2018. Anyway, so the reason I didn't want to sell it then was because I was waiting until summer, and I got it so cheap. It's 200000 in retail. I paid like six grand with shipping and everything. I don't even know if it was that much. So I was willing to sit on it. Uh, then as summer hit, I started moving some of it through eBay and I made probably a grand or so on eBay. And it seems like almost every single video you see me selling a pair of shoes that came from these pallets. Um, I did not list a lot and I've been doing really well with it. I also sold some in bulk. I made about 650 bucks selling swimsuits. 
uh, to three different buyers. And I had a couple of people pick through at like two bucks a piece, you know, pull stuff out. I've probably brought in about 2,500 or so selling off the clothing. So still not at break even, but I still have like 99% of it left. Um, I was going to start moving it through this dollar sale or actually the last one even. I was doing shop go clothes mostly in the last one. It did really well. And I think that really helped. I probably sold a thousand pieces of clothing. That's 20% of the sale. I decided not to because I, I'm going to bulk sell it. The main reason I was holding off throughout the summer was because I was considering opening a store where we do overstock clothing. Well, it's in the way and it's getting closer to winter Q4. I'm not going to have time until spring and I can get more of this stuff. So I'm just going to sell it off in bulk through JLN Distributing, which is my liquidation company. Um, I can probably get a buck 50 to a buck 75 per piece, selling them in lots of 500 to a thousand pieces. And then I'm going to try and get three bucks per pair on shoes. Um, other than the two SKUs that are doing really well on eBay. I've already got the listings made. I'm going to keep those, but I'm not going to list any more on eBay. Um, it's literally just two SKUs, these gladiator sandals, a black pair and a brown pair. And they're doing really well. Anyways, off topic. I figured, you know, instead of putting it out in this sale, and that was what was really going to push me to that $10,000 number, I can get, you know, 50% more selling in bulk. Why would I put them in the sale then? So I am going to go that route instead, which might hurt the sale. I don't know if I'll be able to do 10000 without clothing. Um, but you never know. There's a lot of Amazon stuff. I got four pallets of Amazon inventory. Let me climb up these stairs. I got four pallets of Amazon inventory. I bought out that store in Indiana that was mostly Amazon inventory. I've got storage unit stuff. I've got, I've got a lot of stuff. Still shop going off this depot. Now here's something that I'm thinking about putting in as well. So last year after Christmas, I bought out three Target stores. This was from the store. I didn't buy overstock from a liquidator or anything. This was direct from the store. I got this at 90% off. We've got lights and everything. I'm thinking about moving some of this through the dollar sale. It is middle of October, so people are starting to think about it. So for reference, like this, $3 retail, I paid 30 cents. I don't see why I can't get a buck for this in the sale. Some of this bigger stuff, my thought with this stuff was consignment stores. I do really well with this stuff in consignment stores. I walk away with about 30% of retail. Here's how it works. They will sell, uh, let's, let's say that's 10 bucks. $10 at Target, I got it for a dollar. The consignment shop will then sell it for $6 and I will get half that three, so triple my money. Um, that's usually what I get, some of the stuff a little bit more, like these Philips lights, I might get a little bit more, uh, the motion projectors and whatnot. But some of this stuff, you know, a buck for that, if I can get it now and not have to haul it to a consignment store, that'd be decent. These bows, too, I've got a ton of them. Like, these aren't going to go in the dollar sale, but these might. Um, these, I actually got really cheap. I was working with the store manager of a store, and they didn't want to count them, so he just estimated, oh, what would you say, maybe 20 in here? So I paid for 20, I paid, let's see, 50 cents each times 20. Um, and there's more over there, too. 50 cents times 20 is 10 bucks, so I paid 10 bucks for each of these bins. And I actually got to keep the bins, too. Um, I did that with the wrapping paper. You can see it's in the boxes. That way it makes it easier to display. So I paid 10 bucks each. Well, I went through and counted one of them, and there were like 60 of them in there, not 20. So I ended up getting much cheaper than 90% off. So I would say I probably have, oh man, 20 or 30 cents. No, I'm not doing that right. 10% would be 50 cents. So yeah, 20 or 30 cents in each of these, maybe even less. I could move these. I bet these would sell for a buck in the dollar sale. So I might move some of it that way. Boy, this is a lot of talking. By the way, I am building a collection apparently. I just keep coming across those, uh, the car toppers for delivery places. So anyways, that is the plan. Enough talking. Ugh, I gotta move that stuff. The bottom of the stairs is not a good place to store stuff. Of course, I rarely go up here, it's just storage. Uh, this is probably my, no, I went up there just the other day to get the Halloween costumes out. But beyond that, last time I was up there was probably uh, six, eight months ago, which is why this ends up being a place to store things. So anyways, enough talking. I, I, I'm told I talk too much in my videos, but I really want to show you what we're doing and explain my thought process. Otherwise, I'm going to get a million comments from people saying, why did you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why did you do it this way? This way, it's in the video. Um, so let's get some of this stuff moved. 
I'm gonna stack as much of this as I can in the bathroom. That's right, the bathroom. So I've got two bathrooms here, a men's room and a ladies room. Men's room, ladies room. Now the men's room seems to give us problems, the toilet. This uh, building has an ejector pit, meaning when you put your golf balls, we'll say, in the toilet and flush it, it goes underground in on the other side of this wall, ground down, hey, you can see me, ground down and runs up through that pipe that runs across the ceiling and down right there where it goes, I don't know, to Aaron Rodgers' house or something. Um, this one always seems to cause problems with that pit. I don't know if there's a problem with the plumbing or what. So we decided to stop using it. So I took the sign off and this one no longer says women's. It just says restroom. Um, I would get sick of telling people we use the ladies room. Uh, and people sometimes, even though I tell them men's room doesn't work, use the ladies room, they still go in the men's room. So anyways, this room is just storage now. So we're gonna stack some of this stuff in here. It's on a pallet just in case that were to leak or something, you never know. We'll stack it all up on here and uh, store it here for now. I don't even know if this stuff is gonna make it into the sale because there is so much inventory and I've been sitting on Shopcon Office Depot for a couple of months. I wanna finish it out. My goal is by the end of this month to be done with Shopcon Office Depot. We've got Kmart coming up soon. I'm gonna try and make a run at a few of those stores. I want the shop going off as depot stuff gone. So after, I'm gonna try and get everything displayed in the sale and whatever is unsold, I'll move by the pallet through JLN and I'm gonna move it cheap. A pallet of 2000 products and myself for like 600 bucks. We're just gonna try and get it out of here. Except I'll need to rebox that because I'm not giving those nice bins away. Um, no way, no, no, uh-uh. All right, so here's where we're at. We got a lot of this cleared out and I actually sorted those boxes between dollar sale local auction, and a few items for eBay. Uh, there's a Starbucks mug in it. I'm gonna probably send that to a buddy of mine who collects those. This is mostly Shopco, other than the stuff on the bottom, a couple other odds and ends. I gotta go through that yet. Most of it'll be dollar sale. That's dollar sale. We cleared out some space here. You can see this was a lot more of a mess. Got that pallet out of here. Um, up here is the other big difference. We cleared all that out, so now we can get, you know, get to this stuff. Still got to empty off the shelves yet, but got a good start here so far. What makes me very happy is I've got like four days before the sale starts. It's not like the last time I did it where I had like 14 hours. That uh, wasn't fun. So back here is turning into a bit of a nightmare. Sometimes I really wish I had a bigger warehouse. We got 7,000 feet and I'm busting at the seams. This is all Shopco that is uh, going into the sale. We opened up this area. I had a pallet here before of uh, sheet protectors. This looks like trash, but these actually come in handy when stacking pallets, uh, which is why I kept them, but I probably won't keep them there. This area will get uh, that big set of stairs. But she's emptying out up here. That's the big set of stairs I was talking about. Definitely emptying out up here, making it a little bit more manageable and uh, starting to look almost like we're ready to have a sale. Just gotta do the shelves in that back area. This place is really starting to look trash though. Between uh, $2 sales in a month, which has just been absolute madness and bringing in so much product at once, we've been filling up and just putting stuff wherever we can get it. I also brought in a lot of Office Depot that I had sitting in storage units. I bought nine storage units, that's come in. That's why I decided to stop buying for a little while so we can get all of this sold off. Uh, I mentioned that in a couple other videos, how I'm gonna try and make a lot of money selling all this stuff off, but also getting everything sold by the end of the month. The other thing is my full-time employee who manages this place, uh, he's been taking a lot of time off uh, partially for a uh, personal thing that he needs to take care of and partially for um, a health issue that's been coming up more recently. So that's been making it even more difficult because I'm kind of here running the place by myself trying to do my job plus his job plus, you know, it's just absolute madness. And nothing against him for that, you know, sometimes stuff comes up, I'm understanding, uh, which is, you know, why I'm letting him use his paid vacation for this time off, but it's still, it's a lot of work for me and this place is starting to look awful. I cannot wait till we get this stuff sold off. 
and we can start moving, bring, bringing more product in. I'm gonna try and set up some systems. If this liquidation company really starts taking off, I might get a second warehouse just for that because I don't think we can manage um, both businesses out of here, plus eBay and Amazon. Uh, we're doing really well so far, but we'll see how things go. So here's where we're at so far. We've got some audio equipment. It's mostly speakers, a couple of stereos there. Um, these bins are all Office Depot stuff. There's some good stuff set up here. That one's a little empty, but actually that one's Shopco. It just got tossed into that bin. These are actually pretty nice. Uh, 839 retail and the red tags are clearance. So they clearance it at 839. Retail was probably more like 12 or something like that. Um, climb back here. We've got this stuff here. And then up here, I love how these are up. This little thing here was actually my scrap metal pile. If you remember, I did that scrap metal run. I decided to keep it and look how nice that looks. I'm glad I did keep it. And uh, these kind of hold themselves up down there. So we've got almost, actually all of this is Office Depot. I found a really good box. Um, it had these on top, it had these on top. These are lights for your phone, for selfies. But it also had these. I get 12 bucks each after fees and 80 each after fees on Amazon. They should sell pretty quick. Uh, there's also some other odds and ends. A bunch of OtterBox cases. This was in there. It came from Office Depot, so I know they're legit. But I'm still not taking the risk of selling them on eBay because, well, I, I will probably get a Vero. Uh, meaning the brand will go after me, even though they're real. 40 bucks. That means I paid $2 for this one. But a lot of these were on clearance for the 6 Plus. Um, they're most pretty recent phones. This one looks a little older. Well, 6. That's actually my phone. I've got either the 6 or the 6S. Anyways, 1593 uh, would have been 75 cents, 80 cents I paid for it. I'm going to bulk sell those through JLN. This is looking nice. Uh, getting merchandise on here. I'm just going to wheel it right outside during the sale. Uh, this actually looks really nice. This fixture I got for free from Shopco when they closed. And the hooks I actually had laying around. They're actually slat wall hooks, but they work in here. So we've got, uh, let's see, this came from the Amazon pallets. That came from the store buyout. Amazon pallets, Amazon pallets. Those are Amazon pallets. This is Office Depot. No listing on Amazon for these mouses or USB hubs, uh, but they'll definitely sell in the dollar sale. I've got 50 cents in each of these. So I'll still double my money. Uh, a selfie mirror. So you can see yourself. Hey, there's the rabbit. Oh, um, I think all of this. No, these came from the Amazon pallets. Everything else is Office Depot. Uh, this is actually these are from the Amazon pallets. These are all from the store buyout. I think these were originally Dollar General, maybe. But that looks like Dollar General, but uh, believe it or not. These are a buck in the store. I'm selling for a buck. They will sell. Although these will probably sell faster. And some of them marked 50 cents. I didn't do that. Uh, if a customer walks up and says, hey, this says 50 cents. Would you do 50 cents? Or does that mean that's the price? I'll honor it. But um, most people know everything's a dollar. There's signs up that say disregard price tags. Everything's a buck. We got some of this back to or some of this uh, teacher built bulletin board stuff. Um, these, I got these so cheap. Clearance price was two thirty nine. I got it at two percent of that. So let's see, ten percent would be twenty four cents. Uh, One percent would be two point four cents. So that means I paid about five cents for each of these. I mean, if I sell one of these for a buck, they'll all be paid for, and I'll still have made a profit. That's why when a lot of people talk about all of the junk that you get from these buyouts, how, oh, you're going to lose money. Look at all that junk. The junk is so cheap. Yeah, there's some junk that's expensive, but you're getting it for nothing, just about five cents each. I also found this. This was interesting. These were all stacked and slid into this bag. Uh, what is this? Premier Designs. It's not really anything special. It's just used jewelry. Um, but 
I'm going to glance through it. I think I I can be pretty confident in saying that uh, there's not going to be any precious metals in here. But I'll glance through it. Um, this was from the retail store buyout. It wasn't all new stuff. It was some used stuff. But uh, I'll sell a lot of these at a buck each. Some of the jewelry too. And then whatever's left, if there's enough to merit it, we'll go to a local auction. Usually I'll just fill a beer flat with jewelry. And it'll sell for like 20 or 30 bucks in a local auction. Uh, sometimes it goes crazy and will hit 50 or 60. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes it does. So I just accumulate the costume jewelry after dollar sales and from storage units and stuff and do that. All right, we're getting a bunch of Shopco stuff out. This I got excited about and I paid quite a bit for this. I paid $2.50, quite a bit, comparatively speaking. Uh, it's just the clip. It's not the actual case. One of the downsides about being an end buyer, but we've got a bunch of this stuff. Uh, most of this is out of Shopco. We got a little more space on this table yet. These in the last sale, for some reason, look at this, January to December 2019. These ones were selling in the last sale in September. So we'll see if we can sell. I've got a whole bunch of them there. I was just going to throw them out. I know people are going to comment how I should have tried to sell the ones from the Amazon pallets. And trust me, they would not have sold. So these boxes have to go away. Um, it's mostly cosmetics. Uh, we're not putting a lot of cosmetics in there. These I'm going to bulk sell because they're worth a lot more than a dollar. Um, filled up down here all the way down that way. Got some stuff up here. I think I already showed you that. You know, honestly, other than these tables, it really hasn't changed a whole lot. Got a little bit more on here. Filling that out a little bit. I don't think I put anything else on here. I did. These were up there. I moved them down here. And that's basically it so far. If you notice, there's a bottom shelf all along here. There's one there, too. This one doesn't have one. The reason is because normally my conveyor belt is... It's not a belt. It's one of those skate wheel conveyors. That's normally stored under here. I tossed it in the loading dock because I've got more space to sell stuff now. Oh, I forgot. I also have cosmetics out. Uh, some of it's a little dirty. Oh, this is going to... I'm going to throw that away. That's open. And it's going to leak everywhere. That's what happens. The stuff leaks everywhere and it just makes it look dirty. Some of it's missing pieces. But most of it's pretty nice. And um, I think a decent amount of this will sell. Um, you know, like retail on this, ten forty nine. I would have paid... 20 cents for that 10.49 that's an empty box 10 bucks uh let's see 8.99 so i would have paid what 18 cents i think 6.99 everything's a buck so i think a lot of this is going to sell and if it doesn't at the very least it's going to draw people in people will see oh makeup really cheap and they'll come and they'll end up buying other stuff. I've gone through a lot of this makeup because I've been selling it in lots of a hundred for a buck each wholesale. I'm selling it retail for a buck each now. But anyways, um, I went through a lot of it. And I think the most expensive item I found was like fifteen ninety nine, uh, And there were very few. There were quite a few fourteen ninety nines, nine ninety nines, ten forty nines, that range. But uh, even 16 bucks, the most... I could imagine one being cost me 32 cents. So I'm still tripling my money on that. Um, and a lot of them are, are costing me five, 10 cents. So I'll do really well on that. We put some books out. Now I only grab books that I have some volume on, at least a few copies. Although some of these like this, I have over a hundred. Um, I also only grab books that I feel like people would be interested in. Some of the random non-fiction books no one's gonna want uh digital marketing this looks interesting i really read what it was but i feel like that would be sellable it looks like something military related as well as that um you know stuff like that but that's in english is this english okay there were some foreign books a lot of german ones actually which is why i thought that might be something else this one you know halloween coming up a mix of uh, kids' books, young adult, adult. Um, I think they're going to do all right. And if these start doing really well, I'm going to pull the palette of books I've listed with JLN 
and uh, start bringing more in. In case I do end up still selling a pallet, I mean, I've got the pallet for 400 bucks. If I pull out all of the decent books like that, and I want to sell it for like a hundred bucks plus shipping, I will, uh, I wouldn't want to recount it again. Recount again, that's redundant. I won't want to recount it. So what I will do, and reweigh it, what I will do is weigh and count all the books as they come off, should I decide to pull some off. It all just depends on how well these do. It could go either way, to be honest. So I'm doing one more thing before I leave for the night. These are blocking up good um, table shelf space. These are these doors up here. We still need to get them on, some of these uppers. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna toss them in the loading dock. So I've got the door open. This is the stuff that I tossed down here. That's an empty pallet, the binders. That's the pallet of books and phone cases and then some other stuff that we're not putting in the dollar sale and the conveyor. That pallet's way up there because that is actually going to be sold through the dollar sale, all the stuff on it. Um, it's all Office Depot. Figure it's easier if it's close to the door because I'll have that door open. I'll be running stuff up here during the sale. So anyways, let me get all these tossed down there. So I'm setting more up. I've got this wrapping paper. I've got 30 cents in each one. These bows, I've got less than a quarter in each one. And then more items from that store buy up. But while I was going through it, I found a Bitcoin. So uh, I think these are worth like $10,000. I'm rich. So we're making some progress. We got rid of all the hangers, started putting some stuff up here. Uh, I think this is all Shopco. Yeah, all Shopco. Oh, the CDs and the DVDs won't stay here. We've also got DVDs from that retail buyout and a box of CDs from that retail buyout right there. Those are all going to go on a special rack. I got this section done uh, as far as tables up. Ton of just, most of this is from that retail store buyout. We've got some jewelry that came from the buyout. Uh, but we've got some Shopco stuff over here and some Office Depot stuff over here. Uh, I thought about keeping these. My cost is about 43 cents each, 5% of that. It's three mailers. They're rigid. They've got, I'm guessing, just sheets of cardboard inside of it. Honestly, I don't ship out stuff like that enough to merit keeping them. Um, let's see. This is from Shafco. Good time of year to be selling this. Down here, we've got some USB cables, staplers, phone cases, medical equipment. Um, this box, didn't even realize I had any of these. Um, I didn't pack all these boxes, so I don't know what's all in here. Uh, I had employees doing a lot of the work in this store, but I've got a whole bunch of these metal, uh, clipboards. That's the word clipboards. They're wrapped in plastic. They're brand new. Well, obviously they're from office Depot, Eleven ninety nine each. So it has me a little over 50 cents, probably about 56, 57 cents, something like that. Uh, I don't know how well those will sell. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. A bunch of light bulbs, some random odds and ends. This is stuff I'm taking a loss on. $37.99. This one was $43.99. Well, $43 I paid 5% of that, which is uh, over two bucks. This one's over two bucks. This one's a little under two bucks. And I'm selling them for a dollar, but I mean, Office Max brand, I'm not going to be able to sell this. Even these Panasonic ones aren't really worth much on eBay. So I'm hoping someone will buy them, but it's going to be a tough sell. Um, thought about lotting them all together on eBay, but it's going to be a slow mover for not a lot of money. And I've got a decent sized backlog of eBay that I need to do. So I decided to throw them in the sale. There are some things here and there that I'm going to take a loss on. Here, I'll show you some others right here. 20, 26. So a little over a dollar, 20 bucks. If I bought it, if the original price was 20 bucks, I paid a dollar at Office Depot. If it's 50 at Shopco, I paid a buck. So these I'm going to lose a little bit. I thought one of these was like 40 bucks. I guess not. Um, so some of this stuff I'm not really losing or I'm losing money or not really making money, but we're getting rid of it. I've mentioned this on other videos. When you buy out a store, you get pennies on the dollar, amazing rates, but you have to buy everything. So you're going to get stuff that is junk that you're gonna hope maybe you can break even or not take a huge loss on. This is my worst one. Under the Amazon box boxes is a pallet of those stupid binders. I've shown them in other videos. They're not like a typical binder. Here, I've got some up here. They're called data binders. I paid 42 cents each, I think. They retail eight. That might just be half of one. Yeah, there's 
two pieces in here. Uh, they retail eight fifty, so I paid five percent, which is like forty two cents ish. And uh, I bought like two thousand of them. Wasn't too thrilled about that, but there was also uh, a couple other SKUs, uh, some canvas bags and something else that I'm just not going to be able to make money on. Uh, but somehow I was able to sell them through my liquidation company and not only not lose money, but even make a few bucks uh, on the canvas bags. For example, I had like 950 into it and I sold them for like 980, something like that. So I'm okay with that. Made a few bucks on something that I was just, I would have been perfectly fine breaking even on it. But that's just part of the business when you're buying out stores. You get really good stuff for a fraction of a fraction of a penny and you get absolute trash that you have to deal with too. Overall, I always end up ahead. Office Depot cost me like 10 grand. I expect by the time I'm done to make about 40 grand on it. Even selling some of that junk at a loss. So what else do we have? We have this kid's bike, came out of a storage unit. It's in rough shape. I'm hoping someone will take it, otherwise it's going in the dumpster. Uh, some dog treats, some brushes for grills. Um, this will make your car cool. A cheap disco ball. Some random odds and ends. These are for wrapping trees, uh, protected from like the lawnmower and whatnot. What else do we have here? I think that's pretty much all that I haven't already showed you. I did put this out. This came in a storage unit and I've been putting off getting rid of it because it's gonna cost me like 25 bucks to get rid of it. So maybe someone will pay a buck for it in the sale. Um, so it cost me about 25 bucks to get rid of it and I have to bring it to, not the dump, the, the county has a special place for things like that and paint and batteries and stuff, the hazardous waste facility. Um, I'll be paying like 25 bucks and have to haul it all the way over there. It's heavy. It's annoying. So if I have to, I will tape something to it that says, I will give you $5 if you take this. And then if it's still not taken, I will give you $10 if you take this. Um, let's see if that entices someone to take it. Uh, scrappers will, you know, scrap those, but they don't get much for it. So they're still tough to even give away for them, but you never know. You know someone might, uh, pay 10 bucks or get... 10 bucks, take it and get paid 10 bucks and just leave it in their garage forever until one day they have to deal with it. A lot of people don't plan ahead that way. So that gets that out of here, hopefully. So I still have stuff to worry about here. All of these, I don't know if I showed you these. So this is a fanny pack, it's a booty. I already tried it on, it looks very realistic. And this is a big belly. So I am actually thinking about wearing this for the sale. Uh, when I'm collecting cash. Anyways, I'm gonna, I've got a bunch of these. I think I can sell them through JLN and get maybe two or three bucks a piece. We've got a ladder here I gotta move. This was from that store buyout and all of this stuff. Some of this is actually unsold from previous sales. Um, so honestly, I might just throw this out. You never know. I put that out late in the sale. Some of my tools and those need to get sent to Amazon and odds and ends. Uh, this kitchen table. The person who bought it said they were going to pick it up this week sometime. I sent her a message. Hopefully, she uh, picks it up uh, today, ideally, or tomorrow. Um, came out of a storage unit, sold it for 100 bucks. Still have to go through these from the store buyout, but we're getting there. There's not a lot left to do. Today's Tuesday. I'm hoping to have it done today. If you remember the last sale, I decided at 4.30 in the afternoon, I'm going to have a sale tomorrow. So I stayed up all night. It took me about 13 hours or so of work, give or take, to get it set up, staying up all night. And then I went home and went to bed Well, uh, I had a couple employees running it. This one's a little different. I'm doing it over the course of several days. Uh, Sunday, Monday, it is now Tuesday. I expect to have it done today. But yesterday I did not, did I do this Sunday? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, Sunday I cleared all the pallets out. Monday I started putting tables out. Um, today I am finishing it. But yesterday I didn't put more than maybe an hour of work into it. I was busy with other stuff. So all in, it'll probably still be about 13 hours. It'll just be spread out over a couple of days. Getting it set up. And it's going to get set up better. I'm really going to fill this thing up. Uh, my goal is still 10 grand. And having taken, removed all the new clothing that we had in the last one, it's gonna to be tough, but I think I can do it, especially if I have a ton of stuff. 
under every one of these tables, I'm gonna have a box full of stuff. So going all the way along it. So that'll be a lot of volume. Um, there's, oh God. I wouldn't be surprised if there's 15,000 items just in these boxes all combined. Some of these I know for a fact have over a thousand items. Um, I'm planning on having outside just line the whole side of the building with these. I'm gonna have them about half full so they're easier to dig through for people. That's gonna have a lot of product out. So hopefully the sheer volume of stuff will help push the numbers a bit. Plus we'll be doing the extra day, uh, four days instead of three. I did 5,600 in three days last time. Um, and then I didn't advertise until like the morning of, so the first day wasn't that great. I think I can do it. I really think I can. Uh, we've got clear weather for three of the four days. Friday, it's supposed to rain. However, it seems like the weather this year has not been predictable because oftentimes they'll say it's going to rain. It's perfectly sunny all day, or they'll say it's going to be sunny and it ends up raining. So we're not going to know until we're standing outside and looking at the sky. But according to the weather, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday should be clear. Friday should be rainy. Hopefully it's in the evening when we're not running the sale, but uh, I'm not gonna be putting anything out if it's raining. Additionally, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be warm out Thursday, Friday, uh, 68 and 66. Saturday, Sunday, it's gonna be our normal fall temperature, which is chilly because I'm not used to it. Uh, 46 and 48, I think, yeah, let me. Pull this out, get you some exact numbers. All right, so let's see. Thursday, 66, Friday, 62, Saturday, 63, Sunday, I'm sorry, Saturday, 43, Sunday is 44. A uh, low of 36 and 37 most of those days. That is gonna be brutal because I need to be, I'm usually here at 5 a.m. After the sale's over, I just go right home. I come back at 4 or 5 a.m. and set up. Holy crap, it's going to be 70 degrees tomorrow. Shorts weather. I'm going to be roasting. Thankfully, I'm working indoors. Oh, man, 70. I'm going to die if I have to go outside. I was thinking if I'm going to have this done, maybe clearing out some storage units tomorrow. 70 degrees might be enough for me to say, no, I'm staying in. So I'm up in the mezzanine. This is the second floor. Um, I've got all of my Christmas stuff up here. This is where I keep seasonal stuff. A lot of Christmas stuff over here. Some of this is going in the sale. Uh, most of this will be gone within the next couple of weeks. Going to uh, local consignment shops and whatnot. Now, over here is Easter. These buckets, a couple of different colors and styles. I got their Easter. They came from Shopco. Original price was $2.99. I probably have a few thousand of them. I paid six cents each. It's another thing that I'm not too happy about getting this many. Like, look how many are here. This whole corner, you can kind of see them stacked up there. This whole corner is almost entirely buckets. There's some Easter baskets back there and some other stuff. I got a couple of boxes that are just mixed seasonal also from Shopco. What I'm going to do is sell these 10 for a buck in the sale. I think these will sell 10 for a dollar. Uh, people will buy them for gardening or just use around the house. It doesn't even matter that it's Easter. Ten of them cost me 60 cents, so I'm still almost doubling my money on them, which is pretty good for one of those ugly things you get in a, a store buyout. So uh, I am going to see if I can move these. So I'm running a little bit behind. I've been in such a rush. I forgot to film my progress, so I'll show you here. For starters, we put this shelf here. It's going to be slid over a little bit. This is the break room. Uh, you can see the fridge back there. So I want to be able to access it. So I want something on wheels in front of it. Normally I put a rolling clothes rack here, but we're not really doing a lot of clothing in this one. So I didn't really have a space for it. This worked out well. There were not a lot of DVDs. These all came from the store buyout and a little bit from Shopco. DVDs and CDs on the bottom. I've got a little bit left to, to fill it up a little bit. Not much. Like maybe 20 DVDs left and 40 CDs left. We set this up. This is... So these dry erase board planners, there's only 20 of them for 20, or two of them, I mean, for 2020. The rest are 2019. We'll see if they sell. I've got a whole stack of 2019s. If they start moving, then I'll take the time to roll them up. Um, all of this is like bulletin board stuff for teachers. It did, None of this stuff sold well last time, but it really was not displayed well. It was kind of just in a box right here in the corner. So we've got that set up. We set up some more stuff over here. 
there are seriously so many cases. These are out of shop code, but we've got, that is one of the boxes full of cases from the store buyout. We've got some Amazon cases. There, you, you will not be able to struggle to find a case for your phone in here. This is all merchandise that I have to put out yet. Uh, the, the, a lot of these boxes I haven't even gone through yet, so there might be some better stuff in there that won't go in the sale. Like I'm looking right in here. Yeah, these aren't going in the sale. These will get sold online. Um, anyways, so these, I don't know if I mentioned them or not. Document mailers. I decided to sell them just because it's, uh, I'd rather get a buck a piece for this three pack. It's just a poly mailer with a piece of cardboard inside and there's three of them. I really don't use ship stuff that big that needs to stay flat very often. So for the rare occasion I do, I'll use one of my record mailers. Um, beyond that, we're all set up where we've got a lot more set up all along the floor here. We've got all these boxes full of stuff. Some of these I'm cleaning up these dollar 69 original retail. I got them for five, five percent of that, which comes out to eight and a half cents. Now, I don't know if they just rounded up to nine cents or if they round up the transaction. So that would mean two of them could have been 17 cents or 18 cents. I don't know. And frankly, it doesn't matter. We're splitting hairs here doll hairs those are the hairs we're splitting but i've been selling those pretty well in the last sale at a buck each so really cleaning up on those and we got stuff like that that really doesn't want to move and i've got a couple thousand of them this stuff here this is a great deal because that was their clearance price these were probably like 15 bucks in the store originally um and then we've got these that would match them whoa we're losing them the reason I'm selling them here, because I think I can get, could potentially get more elsewhere, but it'll take a lot longer, is because I'm still making money. At $8.39, that's what that is, my cost is uh, less than 50 cents. It's like 40 something cents. And then this one at $4.92, wow, that really doesn't want to focus, it's so bright. $4.92, my cost is about 25 cents. So it's worth just moving them, get them out of here fast. Um, just all sorts of stuff. These also map pins. I don't know how well those are going to sell. But again, my cost is a quarter each. I can move them elsewhere in bulk if I need to. And that's where a lot of this stuff is going to go. We're just going to put together pallets and sell it with JLN. We've got these. I don't know if I showed you these earlier. They're selfie lights. Three different brightnesses for your phone. So you can take a selfie. A uh, ton of these I decided. Two bucks. I paid 5% of that. So what is that? Four cents, I think. No, I did that wrong. Uh, two bucks, 10% would be 20 cents to so 10 cents. That's what I paid for them. Um, it would have been four cents if I got them at Shopco at 2% instead of 5%. Anyways, I'm going to sell these probably for two for a buck. See if that can move some of these out of here. Uh, we got a little bit of cosmetics. I already touched on that earlier. What else? This is decent. A ton of this metal polish. I kept one for myself. Just kind of the same stuff you saw before, but more of it. And if you watch the uh, Amazon video and whatnot, there's that. These, you might remember, I got a bunch of these at Walmart for 10 cents each. I think, if I remember right, I think this is accurate. 485 units cost me $48.50 plus tax. And I sold like 25 or 30 of them in the last sale. So I'm almost at break even. And I wasn't planning on selling these until next year. And mind you, I'm almost at break even. I still have over 450 of them. So <laughs> I will uh, be moving these pretty well. I'll probably move them for like 30 cents or 40 cents through JLN in bulk next spring. But beyond that, it doesn't look much different. Uh, got a lot of the shelves cleaned up. Still haven't touched this room yet. Oh, I have a feeling tonight's going to be a late night. But the guy who's going to be running the sale, he's missed like the past week of work because of a medical concern. He says he's still in pain, but he can't afford to miss any more work. He's almost out of his paid vacation time. So he, since the sale is going to be easy for him, all he has to do is basically sit in a chair and collect money. He's going to come in and work that, which is amazing because this is too much for just one person to do. I might call in someone else to help out, but um, that definitely helps out. I've got a lot of tables yet that I need to fill. This is where it cuts off. This is all garbage. I need to go dump it in the dumpster before the sale starts. Uh, just random packaging and stuff. Some of these things, like this is a two-pack of running belts. They're retail packaged inside, so I took them out. Now it's two one-packs. Uh, but all of this, well, I'll show you the warehouse. You've seen the warehouse. 
this whole thing here is all from one Shopco. We gotta get that out. There's too much back here. This also doesn't help make it look clean. We save boxes for two reasons. In the last cell, you might remember I had them lined up in the stairwell. You couldn't get upstairs. And the reason I didn't do that this time is so I can come up here. Let's walk up the stairs, like my spare tire, and uh, get shots from above uh, for ads and everything. So anyways, there are two reasons we keep the boxes set aside. Number one, obviously when the sale's over, I gotta be able to box it all back up to get it out of here. But the main reason, you know, they don't need to be right here and we can break them down. The main reason is because a lot of people buy a lot of stuff and they'll, it won't fit in bags, so they'll ask for a box. Definitely handy to have them right there. By the way, this wrapping paper will be gone within the first probably 10 minutes. Someone's just gonna buy it all, I guarantee it. I've already had multiple people offer to buy all of it uh, before the sale even starts. And I turned them both down um, just because this is going to draw people into the building. I'm actually tempted to pull one of these and just have one or two boxes out so we can put more out later. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do that, pull some of it so we can put more out tomorrow or more out uh, Friday, I mean, and then more out Saturday, just because that's the type of thing that's gonna draw people in. A lot of people don't seem to understand why stores like Target don't like resellers. Well, it's stuff like that, except they will buy items that they're gonna take a loss on. And the only reason they sell it so cheap where they're taking a loss is to draw customers in. If we can sell paper towel at a loss, customer will come in to buy paper towel and then they'll buy some other stuff and in the end we make a profit. Um, now this, I'm, I'm actually making a profit. This is, where's the price? $3, so I paid 30 cents. I'm doing more than triple my money. I think some were five, so I paid 50 cents. I'm doubling up. Uh, but it's a great example of something that's gonna draw people in the door. Well, if you or me go into Target and we buy out that entire loss leader, uh, basically Target just took a huge loss on us so we can make some money and it does no benefit for them anymore because it's no longer there attracting people in the door. That is why, or one of the reasons why a lot of stores dislike resellers and don't want our business. Um, in certain cases, we do help them, like when we buy out a clearance rack. Like I'm sure Walmart was happy that I came and bought all of this out just so I could get it off the shelf and they could put more stuff on the shelf. Of course, it's 48 bucks in a store that probably does 30 to $40,000 a day. I don't think they care that much, but in, in comparison, they probably were happy that this was gone. But if I came in and bought a loss leader, they probably wouldn't be so happy. So anyways, that's where we're at right now. Um, I, I'm really excited. I wish I had more of this wrapping paper. I, next year, I will buy out all of it. So I decided I'm gonna put this in the sale. It's a roll of stretch wrap. These things are not cheap. They're like 20 bucks per roll, 15 to 20 bucks per roll. This one is almost gone. And it's, it was like this when I got it. It was one they were using at Office Depot. It's too long. Oh, the roll is too long. It won't fit in my dispenser. So I'm going to see if someone, I was just going to throw it out, but if someone wants to buy this last little bit of stretch wrap, absolutely. It's got a tag for $20.79. I do remember they were selling a bunch of this early in the sale, um, but they must have pulled that one to use it because I got it with all the fixtures after they closed. Executive decision. I held back two boxes of gift wrap. I'm going to put a box out every morning for the first three mornings, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, I seriously expect it to sell really fast since I already had two people offer to buy it out. So these get a little dark. There were lights with them, but they're big, heavy duty lights. So I don't need an electrician to wire up. I got these lights from Toys R Us. Look how nice this is. I put this up because I found two command strips in one of the pallets. It's just these little dinky LED lights. These were in the Toys R Us display cases uh, that I got rid of. So, um... Looks nice, they hold up with command strips and I don't need an electrician. I don't have enough of them, but getting a few extras could be cheaper than getting an electrician. So I'm excited about that. It makes us look so much brighter, so much nicer. And when it looks brighter and nicer, more stuff is gonna sell. To the degree that I'm tempted to go buy more command strips to get the rest of these up today yet. Digging through a box from that store buyout, I found a whole bunch of these. They're going for like 20 bucks on, Am on eBay. So uh, that box is worth a couple hundred. There's some other ones. I didn't look these up. I don't really have time to be looking stuff up, so I decided to keep them all. Found this. Uh, this will not get put out. Somebody is going to spray this just to see what it is. 
nope, not gonna happen. We're gonna get rid of that. So this box was on this cart. We're about halfway through it. I was about to put this box out. This is from a store that I wasn't at. I had employees at. I was about to put it out and I saw something on the bottom. It's a tablet. So I got a tablet at Shopco at 2%. I suppose I didn't open it. We should uh, double check that it's actually in here, but it feels heavy enough where it is. Let me try and do this. There we go. Yeah, there's a tablet in there. It's brand new. That's awesome. I mean, it's just an off-brand tablet. If I remember right, the store was selling these for 150, so I got 2% of that, so $7.50, I think. No, that would be 5%. Uh, $3, I believe, is what I paid for this. I'm not good at math, apparently. I always thought I was. Just not on the spot. So anyways, this would be a good, uh, I don't know, either eBay or send it to a local auction. I'll just say here for now. Glad I saw that, though, because someone walked off with a tablet for a buck. I actually know which store they came from. It was the Shopco in Kimberly, Wisconsin, outside of Appleton. Um, that was a Phase 6 store. I sent one of my guys over there. Um, I think I sent two people over there, actually. Anyways, so uh, we cleared out that store, and I was told, I don't remember if it was one of my people or one of Shopco's people, they had a couple of people floating from store to store, so I worked with some people a few times. Uh, let's see. Alan and Katie and Darla. If you guys are watching, you guys are awesome. Uh, but anyways, it was either one of those three or um, one of my people who told me there was a tablet in that store. Well, I didn't really dig through the boxes. I kind of glanced through them to try and find the tablet. Could not find the tablet. So I figured that was one where we left it in the store. My people boxed it all up, went through the whole process, sorted, boxed it, and left it in the store where I came up with a trailer and uh, cleared it all out. I thought one of the employees stole the tablet. I never found it. That's why my people are so good, they buried it amongst a bunch of worthless shoe things. Not really insoles, just, I guess, heel support or something. I'm excited about that. All right. That's it for this cart, except for these five boxes, all full of cosmetics. That one's really full. It looks like crap because a lot of them have stuff that this one is probably one of the culprits. A lot of them have stuff that leaked on them. They're still selling well in bulk. Uh, I just had someone give me 225 bucks for, well, a box of 100 nice ones up there for 100 bucks. And then 125 bucks for uh, uh, 200 of these as is. Just grab 200. Uh, the nice ones, I'm making sure they're not open like this. That's that's open. Bad example. Unopen like this. And then if they're dirty, I'm wiping them down with alcohol. Um, those seem to do pretty well. So, I mean, there's, I think I counted, what was it, like four or 500 pieces in each of these boxes, I think. I don't remember exactly. But, I mean, that's five boxes. If there's 500 pieces in each box, that's 2,500 bucks right there for me. I completely forgot I had these. A whole bunch of comic books. If you remember the storage unit video, relatively recently I found a ton of comics. Uh, sent them to a local auction company and got like, I don't know, 150, 200 bucks for them. This is what didn't sell. Believe it or not, a lot of these I bet are going to sell for a buck each. So we'll get a decent idea here. I'm not going to count them. That would take too long. But here. I can barely get my middle finger and thumb around the whole stack. So it'll give us a, a gauge if we sold half of them or how much. So I had a revelation. I've always been like this, even in school. In middle school, I'd get a two week project and I would procrastinate and do nothing until the night before it's due and then finally do the project in a matter of like four hours, show up to school dead tired and still get a passing grade. That's basically what I'm doing. It is Wednesday night. It is 7.55 at night. We open in exactly 12 hours and five minutes. I've been doing this Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and now Wednesday. Four days. Four days I've been setting up the last sale. I started at 4.30 in the afternoon the day before we opened. It took me like 13, 14 hours to set up. This is just who I am. I need to start doing that. Just forget about planning ahead. 
just set it all up the night before because that's the only way it's getting done. I would get it all done in 13 hours if I did it the night before rather than eight times four, 32 hours. I hate doing math on camera. Yeah, that's right, 32 hours. Now you guys got me second guessing myself. Anyways, 32 hours of work. That's probably gonna be more than eight hours today. And uh, nothing else done. I would just wait till the last minute. Sunday, I could have relaxed, watched the Panthers win, watched the Packers win, watched the Steelers be the Steelers this year, I guess, that would have just come to accept this. Um, Monday, I could have got other stuff done. Tuesday, I could have got other stuff done. Even Wednesday morning, I could have got other stuff done. That's what I'm gonna do for the next sale. It's gonna be a last minute thing. That's what I have to do. I am me, I am rabbit. I do things at the last minute. Look, I'm Ace Ventura. Uh, 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 uh. This used to be part of a light fixture. And I went to pull it out of the box and I could hear the broken glass. So, uh, can you see it in there? I can't. I stopped kicking it because I didn't want it to fall out. But I got to be Ace Ventura for a moment. I also found a couple of boxes of stuff from the last sale that I forgot to bring to Goodwill. Well, it's the middle of the night, so that's not gonna happen. Right, they're closed, right? Oh, no, I'm going to Goodwill right now. They're open for another 15 minutes. Anyways, here it is. So I'm gonna click get this dropped off. So, I was planning on just leaving it in the truck in the park tonight. If someone steals it, who cares? It's going to Goodwill anyway. But, since I do have time, it's dark out early. It's 8.38. I've got 22 minutes to get to Goodwill. We're gonna get this dropped off. Now I don't need to worry about doing it tomorrow. It truly is amazing to me how people, usually rude people, don't read posts. The post says the address, date, time, everything. And so many people ask what the address is. I literally just got a message that just said the word info. But a lot of other people will say address. Not even a question mark, just address. Like, come on, be a little polite. Well, first read the post and then be polite when you're asking questions. Seriously, I, this is why I don't like selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. And we got that dropped off. I am on the curb. There we go. They have such a narrow turnaround. Basically you make a U-turn as you're coming out of the donation drive thing. I can't make that in this truck. I'll make it in the car, not in the truck. I don't know who designed that, but uh, it's not pleasant. That's why if I ever have a trailer, I cannot come here. Because there's no way I will make that. So we got that dropped off. I'm glad I didn't need to leave it in the truck overnight. I'm glad I didn't need to worry about taking it tomorrow during the sale, mind you, because we open at eight, Goodwill opens at nine. A lot of people are gonna say, just leave it after they close outside the door. I get those comments a lot. And if that's the way you do it, so be it. But uh, that's technically illegal and they do have cameras and it's a $300 fine for dumping. And I know that because I got someone who filled my dumpster, which cost me about 80 bucks to empty, by the way. Uh, they left their mail in it. So we called the cops and uh, they got a nice big ticket. I even told them they, were very belligerent to the officer. I told the officer if they either empty the dumpster or reimburse me for the uh, the cost of emptying the dumpster, I don't you know you don't need to give them a ticket. I don't need to press charges. And the officer tried to explain that on the phone. They weren't having any. This is a long video. We haven't even started the sale yet. Man, my videos are terrible. I don't know why you guys watch, but uh, I certainly appreciate you for watching. All right, I wonder if I can fit this in the loading dock. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see if we can get this in the loading dock. So this room is presentable. Uh, we've got clothes along here. My concern is some of these might be a little high up, um, but we'll, we'll find out. Believe it or not, people are buying clothes when they're packed like this. I used to hang them all up and that took so much time. The last sale, well, if you watch the video either during or after the sale, you can see these are pretty, were pretty empty. Uh, we've got some other odds and ends. I've had this in, these in four dollar sales, but they've always been tucked away down there. So now we'll actually try to sell them before we get rid of them. They're just cardboard though. 
very heavy duty cardboard. I don't know if they'll sell. Um, obviously there's still space on the tables. These, I think I mentioned in another video, it's stuff that just wasn't selling dishes and glasses. So we're selling the whole box for a buck. And I put a whole layer of tape covering the whole top so people can't add stuff to it. I don't care if they add more dishes. I don't want them adding good stuff to it. Uh, this stuff needs to go. This is from the last sale. I didn't give it to Goodwill because I can sell it in a lot on eBay. And then this thing, I think, was too nice to go in the dollar sale. We can move it up another way. Came out of a storage unit. Probably not the best way to display shoes, but I don't really want to give up the table space. These will sell a lot better if they're situated on a table. But, you know, that entire table's value is going to be like 20 bucks then. Whereas the value is a lot more when we have other stuff. So even if I just start tossing shoes or donating shoes, it'd make more sense. Uh, we've got a little more space up on here. I really should probably look this game up. That one I'm pretty sure isn't worth much. Yeah, I'm going to look this one up before I start the sale. In fact, I'll look both of them up just to be safe. I'm going to forget, so I am just going to bring them over here. That way I will remember. So up here, hangers too. Box of hangers for a buck. Um, other than that, you pretty much saw everything. We filled out the tables a little bit more. I'm getting pretty tired. It's like 9.30, 9.45, but um, this isn't bad. I'm not a big gum person. I'm also not a big watermelon person, but I like it. It uh, came from Shopco. I will uh, probably end up just chewing the rest of it tonight because it lasts like three minutes. Uh, that's pretty much where we're at right now. We have a little bit of table space left. That's probably the biggest chunk of table space we got to take care of, but we should have it filled out pretty quick. So I looked up these games, it's five something, that's 683. So I mean, we're talking 11, 12 bucks here. I'm gonna be sending these to Amazon rather than selling them in the dollar sale.